Romania versus Portugal. COVID extremes, you know, this is not unfortunately a soccer match or some other competition. This is a sad, sad comparison, but I think we have to make it because I keep seeing in the comments statements like, what difference does the vaccine make? There is no benefit to be gained. The first one here is the vaccination progress in Romania. As you, many of you know, I'm originally from Romania. I still have family there. I still have a lot of friends, including doctor friends there. And as you can see here, whereas in the beginning of the pandemic, Romania was quite early in starting immunizations. You know, they started in January, just like here in the US and Israel even. So as end of May, beginning of June came, they hit a plateau. The vaccination hit a stall, you know, and, and the rates of vaccination at that time were somewhere around 23, 25%. And it never went anywhere since then. Just recently, in the last week or two, the, the rate of immunization has picked up, and it did so for a reason. So in a country of almost 20 million people, you have only a quarter, and more recently, at most, about a third of the people vaccinated. Rest, the rest are not. And here's what happens with COVID over there. We had a couple of waves before, you know, the more recent one at the beginning of this year. And then in the summer, it hit a zero and everybody was like, oh, we're all done. Who needs to be vaccinated? And one of the reasons the vaccination rate hit that plateau here that I failed to mention is the fact that a good portion of the media, of celebrities, of influencers in Romania, for a reason or another, rallied together against this vaccine, sometimes with tragic comic arguments. I remember seeing not too long ago, one of these people coming out to speak against the vaccine, making this ridiculous statement that if you get the vaccine, you are going to suffer three generations of sterility. You won't be able to have any kids, your kids won't have any kids, and your kids' kids won't have any kids. I mean, how much sense does that make? You know, if it renders you sterile, are you going to have any kids now? So how are you going to have kids that are not going to have kids after that? And kids after, you know, stuff that doesn't make any sense. And yet a lot of people believe that it. it's, it's really mind boggling. Uh, anyways, so what they are experiencing now, unfortunately, in Romania is this huge, big wave of new cases. I mean, they are being hit hard, the hard, much harder than at any previous time in the pandemic. And if we go from cases to deaths, what do we see? The same thing. They have had spikes before, but this time the number of people dying per day is higher than at any time before the pandemic. And this is the reason why you see this uptick in vaccination here in the 11th hour, when people realize this is serious stuff. People are dying from this. We need to do something about this. Fortunately for a lot of these folks, it's too late. You know, every day you have people dying uh, over there. What do we see in Portugal? In Portugal, we see a steady pickup of vaccination where the second dose never ca caught up until very recently with the first dose, meaning more and more people were getting the first dose, outpacing those who, who were coming from behind with the second dose, to the point now that 85, almost 85 of the whole population in Portugal is fully vaccinated. And if you look at the graphs of the statistics of COVID in Portugal, they had those two waves like everybody else in Europe, both Romania and Portugal are European countries. In case you don't know, uh, Romania is uh, in Eastern Europe, uh, close to Hungary and uh, Ukraine at the north. Portugal is, of course, all the way to the west, close to Spain. Portugal had those two spikes of COVID in the beginning, but then this delta wave here from July onwards was much more subdued or blunted than, than the ones before. And when we look at the number of deaths, you see it's almost no bump there. The hospitals didn't have any major burden during this time. I mean, you are looking at, uh, you know, 17 deaths per day. Granted, Portugal is population-wise is about half as big as Romania. So if we, if we account for that, and if you go to the deaths in Romania, we still have close to 300 and 280 deaths per day in Romania versus 17 in Portugal at the, at the peak of the Delta wave in Portugal, not right now. If you go right now in Portugal, you are talking about six or seven deaths per day. 
So this is, my friend, what a good rate of vaccination can do for you. I don't deny there could be other factors at play. You know, COVID is cyclical. Could there be a further wave that is more pronounced in Portugal? I don't think with a Delta wave, potentially with new strains that might be resistant to vaccine, yes, potentially. We don't know the future. But what we see so far in both of these European countries is that the vaccination made a big, huge difference in, in Portugal as opposed to Romania. I want to also include here a touch of a personal story. I think stories are very important because they bring to life, they bring to reality what is actually happening in these things. I have a sister, I have a few sisters in Romania. My younger sister works as an ambulance nurse. And when this latest COVID spike hit, you know, she got COVID, she got vaccinated way back in, in January. But for the last few weeks, she has lived through a nightmare there. She would have a night shift, for example, where she starts in the evening and she's supposed to finish her shift at, at 7 a.m. next morning. But say at 6 a.m. they get a call. They go and pick up somebody who is going into respiratory insufficiency because of COVID. They need to be in the hospital. They pick that person up from their village or wherever they live. They drive them all the way to the hospital, but the hospital is full. There is no place to put them in. So what do they do? They can't abandon it, him or take him home. So they have, by the rules of their profession as ambulance providers, they have to attend to that person until a place, a bed is, becomes available for them in the hospital. That process oftentimes these days can take easily six to nine hours. So she continues to be in that ambulance with the driver and, and the limited resources they have in that ambulance, taking care for that person that's going more and more in respiratory failure for six to nine hours at the end of a night shift. And then she gets home and oftentimes she needs to go back to work for another shift like that. This is no joke, people. I look at the comments that some of you post there as if COVID is this mild cold that, you know, oh, who cares about this? You know, just relax, folks. You know, there's nothing here. I want you to realize that this is not true. This is not the case, at least in many places like Romania right now. And we've been through this here in the U.S. ourselves before. I mean, this is how bad it looks over there. not trying to hurt anybody's feelings here. I just feel like this is a serious matter and we need to take it seriously and, and have the humility to not submit to authority like sheep, like, you know, some people call us all sheep because we just march in order after the CDC or whatever, but to have the humility to realize that we are no experts unless we are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And if there is one expert that goes the opposite way and 99.9% .9 stay in the right track, why is it okay to go after that lone lost sheep? There is an agenda in each and every one of these lost sheep that I've seen going off track, and it's not a good agenda usually. Anyways, I hope you stay healthy, uh, stay wise,